Get to your dealer now for the Power and Performance Sales Event. Get up to seven years of Yamaha warranty protection free. Or earn up to $200 in dealer credit. Yamaha Power and Performance has never been a better value. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. I hate March, man. I really, really hate March. I always have. You get through the, the longest, shortest month of the year, the bitter cold of February. And here comes the first, the, the month of spring, the opening of striped bass and winter flounder. You see the light at the end of the tunnel. And then the cold and the rain, it drags you back into the abyss. I mean, weren't we supposed to have an early spring? Didn't Punxsutawney Phil come out of his rat hole and Nobbler's knob or whatever it was and say, yeah, early spring coming. Yeah. 90% chance of rain Thursday, March 28th. So forgive me, I decided to do my video fishing forecast this week from the warmth and dryness of my office this week. Jim Hutchinson, New Jersey, Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine. It is the final weekend of March 2024 and pretty much finding, uh, putting your foot on the clutch and getting ready to go in into third gear at this point on the striper fishery. And I think we've got a fourth and a fifth still to follow. But definitely the bass bite is intensifying. The fish are getting bigger. In fact, earlier this week, the folks at Higby's in Fortescue shared this photo on so social media, a jumbo caught in Salem County by Carl Pilot Jr. and Eric Adams. The bloods came from Fortescue. This big fish was caught and released somewhere closer to the bend or around the bend. So it would seem that there are a number of bigger striped bass on the move now along the Delaware River. You, you will catch some fish uh, if you're blood warming along Fortescue Beach. A lot of folks have been doing that. But again, Bloodworms are starting to account for some of those bigging, bigger spawning fish up the Raritan. I would say the same thing uh, for the Raritan uh, as well. The fish are getting bigger there. That's obviously why we spotlighted the Raritan Bay in the March edition of the Fisherman Magazine. It is a world-class striper fishery. It always has been. But in the last few seasons, spring and fall, it's just been a, uh, so much better than just about every place else. I remember years ago, uh, folks out on the eastern end of Long Island, they said, if you're not in Montauk, you don't know what striper fishing is about. And they looked at New Jersey and said, eh, so what? Now it seems like all the fish are in New Jersey in spring and the fall and everybody elsewhere has gone, oh, there's no more fish. I guess we have them. And that's why we should continue to take advantage of them. Hey, fish have tails. They move, they swim, they migrate. Fish, fish have tails like birds, have wings, they fly. How about this bird? On the cover of the April edition of the Fisherman Magazine, former Philadelphia Eagles defensive end, Trent the Hunter Cole. Yes, he's on our April edition. Cole played 12 or 13 seasons in the NFL, 10 of them for Philadelphia, retired an Eagle. He's second on the NFL all-time sack list for the Eagles. The Eagles, second. I, I, nobody's gonna, ever going to reach Reggie White. But hey, second, that's not too bad, Trent Cole. Thank you, Bucky D'Agostino, who's a regular fishing partner of Trent Cole, who's now actually fishing competitively, I believe, as well. But Bucky shared that photo, which graces the April edition of the Fisherman Magazine. Striped bass, yes, they're on the Chesapeake. They're doing their spawning thing up the river, and yeah, they're starting to get into position on the Delaware and the Raritan as well. Of course, the Raritan Bay is where they're going to stage. They're going to feast on all that bunker and all that other bait before they head up the Hudson River. Maybe the Hackensack and Raritan to spawn as well. But the fish are there. Look for Hunter, the Hunter, and the Hunted, his quarry. It's in retail outlets this week. You can find that April edition of the Fisherman Magazine in your local tackle shop, in Wawa, most of the quick checks. Think any place you're getting a cup of coffee and your daily newspaper, look for the Fisherman Magazine as well. Now, when you open up that glossy edition, there are articles about improving your kayak photos for better shots and safer releases. Get a look at tossing spooks on top for spring stripers. This one was really kind of a Jamaica Bay and just outside the Bay perspective, but the spooks are, they're phenomenal. Those top waters were just about at the top water season along the Raritan Bay as well. We've got a great rod build from the master of snap jigging himself, Captain John Padawano, and another Captain John, Captain John Raguso, 
deep jigging for black sea bass. We will get our black sea bass season here in New Jersey in May. Nothing changed. It's the same as last year. But read that article by John. Get yourself all geared up for black sea bass when it does open later on this spring. The other article in the glossy edition is my article on Striper Quest 2024. Now, May 16th on the Raritan Bay, we're going to go out and we're going to do some striper tagging again with the folks from Gray Fish Tag Research. Our Northeast Striped Bass Study will return. Satellite tags will be deployed, but we're inviting members of the public. We, we have um, a field of 50 boats. We want you to join this tournament because that's what it's going to be. It's going to be the largest single day of striped bass tagging in the world and a tournament to do so. We've got some great prizes coming. Uh, the folks from Gray Fish Tag are going to be in town. A lot of advertisers, big partners. The folks from Penn are going to be around, AFW High Seas. I think Chris from Uzuri. We've got crews coming from Costa Rica and from Mexico to participate in this event. May 16th, Raritan Bay. I've got to run some uh, flyers up along the Raritan Bay shore, but you'll find all the details in the April edition of the Fisherman Magazine. I hope you can join us that day. The whole staff is going to be out there. Also inside that April edition in the New Jersey, Delaware Bay region, look for that table of contents. You'll find details on our Dreamboat Fishing Challenge for subscribers only. You've got Nick Honachowski. He's chasing tide running ghosts, those big weak fish in the surf. Jenny Ackerman picks up where she left off last week with her plug bag feature. What's in your plug bag? Well, she offers what's in her plug bag for the April score from shore for striped bass. There's an inshore tuna primer by Captain Scott Newhall. Not too early to start thinking about that. It's dedicated to Central and South Jersey anglers in particular. Some great spots that you might want to set up for the tuna grounds. Uh, when those tuna arrive later on this spring. It's not a spot burn unless the fish are there right there. Uh, also, the wild man himself, Tom P, Rack and Fin Radio. You'll also find him out at Creekside. He does his annual stock report here in the Garden State. It's a regular feature we do every year. Runs down the total number of rainbow trout being stocked uh, by the Division of Fish and Wildlife and where you can score, where some of those brood stock fish, those bigger fish are. Find it all in the April edition. Just keep in mind, at this point right now, while the state workers are busy dropping trout in every pond and puddle they can find around the Garden State, at this point, just about every trout stocked water is closed to fishing. There are some exceptions. You can find them, those exceptions or exemptions where there's a catch and release only stretch in the Freshwater Digest. That's available in most tackle shops as well. You'll also find it at njfishandwildlife.com. But again, next Saturday, April 6th, that's our trout opener. All back in business at that point. But apparently, I mentioned her before, Jenny Ackerman, well, she found some fresh stock trout, which were fair game as of this past weekend. Now, if you watch our Long Island Metro New York video fishing forecast as well with Matt Broderick, you probably know Paul McCain from River Bay Outfitters. Well, Paul called Jenny recently and said, why don't you come on up here and fish the famed stretch of the Kennequat River. This happens to be Kennequat Reserve on Long Island, one of the finest trout stretches, uh, catch and release fly only stretches in the entire Northeast. Jenny had a real treat to be able to get up there with Paul and fish at Kennequat. So open boat this week comes to you from Long Island, sort of an intro to fly fishing for trout. Hey everyone, welcome to this week's open boat. Today I'm up in Long Island at the Kennequat Preserve. And this is a blue ribbon trout rivers. The presidents have been here. The New York elites used to be, this used to be their playground for trout. But guess what? I'm here now and Paul is gonna show me how to catch trout on the fly rod. So let's go because I wanna learn how to fly fish and I wanna catch some trout and I wanna take you guys with me. Hi, you must be Paul. Oh, hi, how you doing? I watch you every week. <laughs> nice I love, to meet I love, you. I'm so happy to have you here no, on Long Island. thank you. I'm honored. I'm very excited because I've literally never fly fish before in my entire life, and I'm ready to learn today. Oh, it's a whole new sport, man. Oh, boy. Yeah, it's a whole new sport. <laughs> you might not want to go back to anything else when oh, you get done no. with this. Oh. <laughs> so what I think we should do is let's uh, first, before we... Re put our waders on, we're just to practice a little casting. Okay. All right? So just to get it ready. And I'm going to use this as a, a five weight, soft the rod. It makes it easier to learn on. Okay, good. Right? <laughs> oh, you're going to do fine. <laughs> Most, it's actually women are better fly fishermen than men. So the big thing here, Jenny, is not that uh, 
it's the line. Normally you're surf fishing, you're yeah. throwing the plug mm -hmm. and the plug has the weight. In this case, it's the line has the weight. The flies have no weight. So yeah. you're actually delivering the line. Okay. All right. And to do that, you need actually a little bit of line because it's tapered. Yes. All lines are tapered, right? So you need a little bit of line out to be able to load the rod. And a load, all that is is, see how the rod bends? Yeah. And if you let it go, it unloads. Okay. Right? And that's the whole, that's the basically the whole thing. You need two things to do. You need to load the rod and you need that abrupt stop. Okay. Right? So you're not like this. Right? It's actually like, do you ever play darts? Is it like a 10 and 2? Right. The 10 and 2. The 10 and 2, 10 and 1. <laughs> okay. Do you play darts? Not really. No. Okay. Have you thrown a paper? Yeah, have you yeah, ever... I know it like throws. Right. Yeah. It's like, doink. Yeah. It's not this. No. It's that you stop, stop it. and release. Okay. And then you're doing the same thing with a fly rod. You're stopping and release. Okay. Right? So stop, 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 stop. See how tight that roof yep. is? If you go too long, see how open it is? Yeah. Right? Stop, stop, stop. Well, it's time for you to learn. <laughs> okay. Okay. So what so, you do is you're actually going to start, start a little low. Okay. Because you got the line out. Yeah. And you're going to come up. Stop here. Yep. Stop here. See that? Oh, okay. Stop. Gotcha. Right, just like that. And then lower it down as the fly. So low, bring it back. Very good, except you need a pause too. Okay. So what you what, what you do with it is yeah. you can actually tie turn sideways and watch it go back and then go forward. Okay. You want it to go back and then forward. Paul showed me the ropes for about 30 minutes on fly fishing and I kind of have it down. I, I've got more confidence in this skill now and we're ready to go and get on some fish. Okay, so now we're testing out this first tidal pool here. Conditions are a little rough with the rain, but we're going to make it work. And I get to test out my casting with the fly rod here. And there's nothing really happening in this first pond. We're not really hooking into any lunkers, so we're going to move on to the next one and see what we can get ourselves into. Oh, there oh, you go. Oh, my there God. You go. Good. Should I reel it in? Yeah, or no, just pull it on pull the, it? The, the, but don't yank it. Okay. Let it keep pulling it. Keep it always tight. The keep the rod tip up a little bit. <laughs> okay, up I got a little it. bit. A little bit. Excellent. <laughs> nice fish. Nice fish. Oh brookie. my goodness. A nice brookie. We got a duck in the audience here too. Okay. <laughs> Open Put your fan. rod tip that way. You don't want to let them get into the grass. Okay. Yeah, all right. <laughs> the duck is chasing them. That's all right. Okay. Um, how do you want Just this? Slowly pick it up. Unfortunately, I forgot my net in oh, my car, God. but that's all right. It's gonna get all tangled. He's, don't worry about that. <laughs> you got it? Oh, he's good. He's good. Oh, he's off. No, <laughs> we saw it though. It's long line release. It's the duck's fault. That's right. We had one. Long line release. Oh my goodness. You don't have to spend a lot of money. Everybody thinks it's fly fishing is so expensive. Fan stall reels are how much, you know? <laughs> yeah. Right? You don't have to spend a lot of money. Uh, and in fresh water, the lines are very important. Uh -huh. Save the money on the reel. Okay. You know, you could have the cheapest reel and it does all the same thing. Yeah. Right? In salt water, yeah, you want a good reel. Exactly. Bigger fish, fighter fish, stronger. Yep. But spend the money on a good rod. You could get, you could get set up for less than $200. Say no more. Yeah. Literally, I mean. No, no, you need that thousand dollar rod. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah. After you today. You need that thousand dollar rod. I'm telling you, you deserve that thousand dollar rod. <laughs> Set the hook. Do you have one? I think you have one. Oh, wait, hang on. I think he's off now. Oh, I think. Hang on. Can he still? T wait a minute. Oh. Nope. We got him. We got him. <laughs> there we go. Go. There you go. Bring the rod tip to you. Yep. Bring him right. He's. Oh. He's a little. Oh, there yeah! we go. Yeah. <laughs> That's a nice one. Oh my gosh. So this has been a ton of fun for a first time fly fisherman. I'm hooked. I hate to say it, but I'm happy to say it. Another hobby for me to get into. From black fishing to fly fishing, I'm ready to go. So I want to get another one here. But thank you again, Paul, for showing so, me the ropes. Oh, any time. And yet look at it. It's just as a different technique. You know, you, 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 I'm not saying stop the other things. 
But add this to your quiver. It's going to get add added. Add it to your quiver. I'm going to be a jack you know? of all trades in the fishing industry here. Yeah, that's right. And this is this has been a ton of fun, and it's super tranquil out here, and I'm really enjoying my time. So. Oh, I'm glad. I'm so glad. <laughs> I'm, and it's a pleasure meeting you because you are the one I watch on the fishing report. <laughs> Thank you. Know? You. you know? So we just wrapped up here on the river. It wasn't the best day with the fishing conditions after all that rain, but I managed to catch some fish, my first fish on the fly, so that was awesome. Yeah. Paul really helped me out here and really showed me the ropes on how to fly fish and a beginner fly fisherman experience. It was all around a great time and I'm gonna have to get myself a fly rod and reel now. Mentioned it before, next Saturday, April 6th, the New Jersey trout season opens, so does Pennsylvania. Sunday, April 7th, Delaware opens up entirely. Part of their state has been open, but everybody's going to be open at the end of next weekend. And I do know that this weekend, the guys from the Shark River Surf Anglers will be out at Spring Lake stocking trout in advance of next Saturday's youth tournament. If you've never been to that youth tournament, you got to go. Bring the kids. It's free for the kids. Fantastic event. I'll have some updates from Jenny because she's going to go watch the trout stocking at Spring Lake this week, but there are some jumbos being put in there. Uh, the, the one thing that can keep me away from the opening day trout going elbow, to, uh, elbow with a bunch of friends is going to that event and watching these kids, the smiling faces, the excitement of this event. I'll have more to report on that in next week's video fishing forecast. Porgy season in New Jersey is officially open as of this week. It only took 13 business days, two and a half full weeks from the March 7th meeting for the New Jersey Marine Fisheries Council after they voted March 7th to open up Porgy for Commissioner La Tourette to slow walk the paperwork down to the lawyers. You know, I'm sure if the folks from Orsted or Royal Dutch Shell needed something from this administration to help them install more turbines off the beach. Oh, like getting rid of home rule in five days, getting the entire Trenton legislature in five days to get rid of town rights. Yeah, I guess fishermen are just kind of on the back burner here. We're at the end of the line. That said, yes. Summer flounder, it's official. It is now pencil to paper. The signatures are done. May 4th, the summer flounder season opens in the Garden State. Three fish, 18 inch minimum size. Uh, of course, you've got the special regulations at Island Beach State Park. You're gonna have the uh, special regulations uh, there on the Delaware Bay as well. If you're not geared up with all the baits you need, you better get started. For more than 20 years, anglers everywhere have come to know one thing, that nothing says no to fish bites. And like I said, Porgy is back in business, though I'm not exactly sure if the head boats that have been sailing, like the Paramount or the Big Jamaica, have even been finding Porgy on the offshore grounds. I did uh, uh, talk to a friend recently uh, who ha who's friendly with the commercial guys, and I'll bring this up in another minute too. The commercial guy says, nah, the scup are pretty much north and east. So I'm not even sure uh, if we open up the porgy uh, uh, boats, if uh, the boats start adding porgy, if anybody's gonna find them. I, I know those guys uh, out of Manasquan and Shark River probably find them. So anyway, that's back in play. Then on Monday, April 1st, we're gonna get blackfish. Totog season reopens in the Garden State, a four blackfish per person limit, 15 inch minimum size for the month of April. And I said it last week, so I'll say it again. I wouldn't be surprised if more shorebound anglers are finding success from the get-go on April 1st, uh, because we have had some reports of guys who are fishing for winter flounder with small bits of bloodworm are catching tog along the jetty rocks, the canal, the bulkheads, um, so yeah, uh, I think that we could find some uh, decent blackfish action on terra firma as much as those boats are going to do much better with the bigger fish, right? Uh, out on the wrecks and snags. I know of my, um, uh, the Marcade Marina where I keep my boat, it's a private marina. Uh, if he gets his water running outside so that I can rinse out my four stroke, I hope to have the boat in within another couple of weeks so I can hit some of those back bay snags uh, spot my uh, spot lock myself on some back base structure and yeah maybe uh, 
Look, I know there's smaller tog in the back bays, but hey, hope brings magic. Um, I'm hoping to also toss a few NLBNs around the local rivers in search of stripers. A few of the other goodies that I, I picked up this show season. Uh, thank you, Anthony, for, for scoring uh, a whole new batch of Kettle Creeks. Mike and the guys who furnish brand new flies for me, thank you so much. I took advantage of, this, uh, of, the, uh, of the Azori deal a couple of weeks ago. Keith set me up with a brand new tackle box. Tom, beautiful print. Bob with a beautiful print. Uh, so many great things uh, uh, picked up this show season. Got to thank Jerry Gomber. Uh, brought me some goodies from the Fisherman Vault, which will be a nice addition to the bookshelf right next to the Fisherman logo desk piece that I got from the custom craftsman, uh, the guys out at Kevin Bogan's in Point uh, last year. Both ends of the state, Delaware and Raritan Rivers, still the best possibilities uh, for scoring stripers. Although, again, it's been on. Uh, from the get-go, the Great Egg, the Mullica, the Toms, uh, some, some, some good action in the back. Just keep an eye on the amount of rainfall we do get today, Thursday, March 28th, that could impact our striper fishing a tad uh, as we head into the weekend. I mean, when you have all that fresh water coming down in those freshwater systems and flushing out into the salt, let's just use Toms River for an example, all right? In the Toms River, if you're finding stripers on Wednesday before the rains at Huddy Park, and then you go on Friday when it's a nice day, those stripers might not be there. They might stretch out farther to the east, spread out throughout the salty stretches, might even move out into Barnegat Bay. So that's something that you want to keep an eye and ear open on, uh, the water conditions. And again, like I said before, fish have tails. So if you find them in one spot the next day, it's not a guarantee they're going to be there the next. Uh, a quick look at the ocean water temperatures out of Atlantic City this week. Uh, Tuesday and Wednesday were both at 45 degrees, uh, which should bode well with maybe pushing more of those ocean run stripers into our estuaries. Uh, another five degrees or so out front, I think will really be in business in terms of the spring run along the front beaches here at the Jersey Shore. In fact, I saw the big Jamaica this week has scheduled this weekend. They're going out of Manasquan Inlet looking for striped bass. And hey, somebody's gotta be first um, <laughs> in so many ways. Uh, how's the striper fishing been? I don't know. Go catch a striper and you let me. Somebody's got to be first. So I'm anxious to find out how the big Jamaica does this week um, when we do our reports for next week uh, as far as getting out there looking for striped bass out front. What about that other anadromous migratory visitor, the American Shad? I've got a trip scheduled in a couple of weeks with Captain uh, Tim Keebler on Fin Seeker Guide Service, hoping to score well on that catch and release fishery. A few years ago, Dad said, you gotta bring shad roe home and cook it up with a lot of bacon, you'll love it. Tried it once, man. For now on, shad's all catch and release for me. For more on shad and other freshwater options, let's go out and check with George, our Pocono Outdoors guy. Well, hey, thanks, Jim. You know, some big changes over the last week. We had that huge storm come through on Saturday, gave us lots of rain, wind, and really dropped temperatures quite a bit here, especially in the Poconos. Uh, shad fishing is affected a little bit. You know, that really raised the flow rates, dropped that water temperature, and I think we dampened the shad fishing just a bit. But with the warm weather come back this week, I think we'll be in much better shape for this coming weekend. So I hope you guys get out and get back on those shad. Other things right now, we got uh, trout in about a week, week or so, uh, starting up statewide here in Pennsylvania, also in New Jersey. So a lot of guys out looking for their favorite trout spot in the next week. So good luck to you guys there. Other things in the area, guys are always out fishing, uh, getting into some walleye, some, some pike, some pickerel. Uh, Paul Seward checked in. He was in South Jersey getting into a ton of crappie. He said he got about 50 on his day trip out, so great work there, Paul. Uh, Susquehanna is still producing monster smallmouth uh, all the way up and down, so uh, guys like Nick Canestra checked in, my good friend Nick. Uh, he was out in that lower Susquehanna over in that Blue Marsh area. Uh, picking up some smallmouth again with that jerk bait still producing really well in all areas. Guys, lots of fishing. I hope things improve for this week and be sure you get out and get on them. But from Pennsylvania, I'm George, your Pocono Outdoors guy.
Couple of fishing tournaments in New Jersey underway or soon to be. One underway tournament is Riptide Bait and Tackle's annual Striper Derby. It kicked off at the beginning of March. It runs through May 24th, and it's not just stripers, but also bluefish and tog. I did hear some rumblings uh, in our reports this week that you'll find in the April edition of The Fisherman of some bluefish being caught in South Jersey. Just don't have any substantiated reports just yet, but it should be happening pretty soon. I did hear from a friend of mine, I mentioned it before, talking with some commercial fishermen. Some of the commercial fishermen are saying they can't set their gear in the Hudson Canyon because there's so many bluefish out there. So hopefully those racers, those gators, those choppers, those bluefish are just prepping now for their spring invasion. Again, look to the third, second or third week in April. I think we're going to be right on target for seeing bluefish running through into our inlets. We did get a black drum report last week, talked about it in Atlantic City at One Stop Bait and Tackle. Noel said his shop tournament for bass and blackfish will kick off on Monday, April 1st. No fooling. Runs all the way through the end of the month. You can stop by the shop for details. Of course, you will find a full calendar of events for April in the April edition of the Fisherman Magazine. The calendar of events is on page 10. You won't find that type of information anywhere else. I, I do my darndest to track down every fishy event in the New Jersey, Delaware Bay region. So if you've got an event that's coming up, your fishing club, or you've got a tournament, something fishing or boating related, and you want to see it in the calendar of events, you email me at jhutchinson at thefisherman.com. Story ideas, you want to share a tail end, you've got a tactical piece that you want to share, same email address. Drop me an email. Uh, my email is also on page three in the masthead of the magazine. Drop me an email. Say, I want to be, a, I want to be an author. I want to write some, uh, some articles. By all means, we want more people contributing to the Fisherman Magazine. And again, just look for Trent Cole on the cover of the April edition out in newsstands this week. Subscribers, you should be getting it by today, hopefully Thursday, Friday at the latest. Uh, sure, I could probably use a few more celebrities on the cover, right? I, I know a bunch of friends who watch this are friends with Martin Truex. Get Martin out there. Shoot me a vertical shot. I want Martin Truex on the cover. And yeah, I know I'm a Birds fan, but if you're a Giants fan or a Yankees fan or a Rangers Devils fan, by all means, let's get some of these superstars showing off some of the fish they're catching in the New Jersey, Delaware Bay region. We'll get them on the cover of the Fisherman Magazine. Temperatures here at the Jersey Shore expected into the upper 50s this, this weekend. So after the rain has passed, uh, not just stripers, you might want to try some of the bulkheads with a dozen bloodworms, small pieces on those small top and bottom rigs, uh, a chum pot, Somewhere along the upper stretches of Barnegat Bay, Shark River, stop by and see the folks at Fisherman's Den for advice. Go see Frankie at Gabriel Tackle or Pete at a, a, a Charlie's for upper Barnegat Bay advice. Or anywhere along the Delaware Bay Shore, if you're thinking about trying winter flounder, stop in and see Steve at Upfront Bait and Tackle or the folks from Julian's or the Ciantino boys out there at the tackle box. They'll point you in the right direction. Just hoping for a wonderful, wonderful first week of April. Some warmth, some sunny skies, truly what we need, uh, especially as we go into the first day of trout season next Saturday. I can't remember the last trout season opening uh, where we had sunny skies and warm temperatures where I had to take off my jacket. So let's hope, fingers crossed, for a, vi uh, a really nice uh, week uh, after this weekend. And be sure to like this video if you have a YouTube account. Uh, sign up for the alerts, click that notification bell. There's a lot of good stuff coming from the Fisherman Magazine this season. For example, uh, the NLBN folks, uh, Jose and crew from No Live Bait Needed, invited the Fisherman Magazine into their headquarters in Florida, uh, sat down and spent some time with Captain John Raguso and Matt Broderick from Long Island talking about NLBN products, why they work so well, uh, if you do have a rainy, cold day where you're sitting at home, you've got a little less than an hour. This is a long podcast, but go look for it. But again, hit that bell, the notification. You want to get signed up for those alerts on YouTube. So every time we release a video, you know that it is out there. The groundhog lied. Death to the groundhog. But March is coming to an end. It's got to get better, right? April is upon us. Just a matter of days. Hopefully it's going to be a beautiful one. 
Catch them up this weekend. Have a wonderful, happy Easter with your family. And I'll see you again next week at The Fisherman Magazine and right here at thefisherman.com.